Android is working at scale. Last year, eight out of 10 phones that were shipped were based on Android. There are over 4,000 distinct devices you see in Android. And the range of what we see is what we really embrace. Of course, for TV, for televisions, we have a simple and elegant solution in the form of Chromecast. And today I'm very excited to announce HBO Now for the first time is coming to Google Play and it's available across Android and iOS using Cast. And today, I'm excited to share a preview of the new M release of Android. The central theme of M is improving the core user experience of Android. We're greatly simplifying app permissions to a smaller set of easily understood things like location, camera, microphone. Second, apps will now ask you for permission the first time you try to use a feature instead of asking during app installation time. So next up, we want to give you a preview of an important initiative we're working on, which we call Android Pay. It's simple, because all you have to do is unlock your phone like normal, place it in front of the NFC terminal to pay, and there's no need to open any app. Your actual card number is not shared with the store during the transaction. Android Pay will work in over 700,000 stores across the US, which accept contactless payments. Android Pay works on phones from KitKat forward, but with the M release, Android Pay gets even better. Because it turns out that Android device makers have been including fingerprint sensors on devices since 2011. The user simply touches the fingerprint sensor, which unlocks the phone. The phone will then make a secure NFC exchange with the payment terminal. And then the payment goes through, and you get the Android Pay notification of the transaction at the top. We're changing Android and M to be smarter about managing power through a new feature we call Doze. Android uses significant motion detection to learn if a device has been left unattended for an extended period of time. In that case, it will exponentially back off background activity to go into a deeper sleep state. Of course, no matter how much better we make power management in Android, sooner or later, you got to recharge that device. So we've been working with device manufacturers to bring Type-C devices to the market with the M release. And because Type-C is bi-directional, the M release adds the ability to select whether you want your device to be charged by the cable or instead for your device to act as the charger to whatever it's plugged into. As another example, we've made sharing easier. The system can now automatically learn which people and which apps you share with most frequently and make those available with just a single click. So that's M. Um, we're working incredibly hard to produce our most polished Android release to date. Nest has been working hard at taking traditional devices in the home and reimagining them for users. So we have worked, collaborated closely. We have pulled in people from the Nest, the Android, and the Chrome OS teams to take a fundamentally new approach to the Internet of Things. So I'm very excited to announce today, we are announcing Project Brillo, which is the underlying operating system for the Internet of Things. The next step is what we call as Weave. Weave is the communications layer by which the Internet of Things can actually talk to each other. Our core mission is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. So we are working hard to be more assistive to users. To talk about how we are doing that, I'm going to invite Aparna from the Google Now team. So we're working on a new capability to assist you in the moment, right when you need it, wherever you are on the phone. We're calling it Now on Tap. So here he's listening to Skrillex, and you wonder, like me, what is his real name? Okay, Google, what's his real name? Skrillex's full name is Sonny John Moore. Who knew? So here, you see an email from my friend Ali about catching a movie. So all I have to do is a simple tap and hold on the home button. Google now brings me information about Tomorrowland. Again, with a simple tap and hold on the home button, you get help. But I have to say, the computer scientist in me is practically giddy with excitement here because that's some like epic natural language understanding action going on here. Pretty neat. I can tap on Hugh, and I get information about Hugh Laurie. How often do we spend time 
just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling to find that one photo that we want? What if we could use Google's unique capabilities to help people take back control of their digital lives? And that's why I'm thrilled to be here to introduce a brand new product, Google Photos. Google Photos automatically backs up from your phone, tablet, computer, and even your camera memory cards. We can also sync all your photos and videos with Google Drive. I can view my memories across days, but with a simple pinch across months, and again, across years. Using machine learning, Google Photos understands what's important and helps you by automatically organizing your memories. So here, I'm just gonna tap the blue search button and you'll see all my photos organized by the people, places, and things that matter the most in my life. This auto organization is private and it's for my eyes only. Let's have a look at all the photos I've taken of my niece. The recent ones are at the top and I can go back to when she was four years old as a flower girl in my wedding. But what's amazing is I can go all the way back to the week she was born. We can automatically group photos of the same person over time. I just tap the search box, I'll type snowstorm in Toronto, and instantly I'm able to find these photos that I'm looking for. By selecting and tapping the plus button, Google Photos lets me create collages, animations, movies with soundtracks, and more. We've introduced a new gesture to make multi-photo selection really fast. I just press and hold on one of the photos and drag my finger to select them all. So in this case, I'm simply going to tap get a link. And in less than a second, I have a link to all 25 items. Now the beauty of this is I don't have to worry about whether the recipient of the link has a particular app or has a login. I can share it any way that I want. Now when we say a home for all your photos and videos, we want everyone to be able to safely back up and store a lifetime of memories. And that's why we're also announcing with Google Photos, you can now back up and store unlimited Google Photos is rolling out starting later today on Android, iOS, and web. So we've been thinking a lot about how to bring the real world to users in a more immersive way. So we started our efforts here with Google Cardboard. Now, the original viewer, it was great, but phones, turns out, got a lot bigger in the last year. <laughs> and so the new design fits phones with screens as large as six inches. Uh, and now, instead of it taking 12 steps to assemble, it takes just three. And so, as of today, the Cardboard SDK for Unity will support both Android and iOS. We're excited to announce Expeditions. So a box arrives with everything that you need to travel. Cardboard and phones for every student, a teacher tablet, and all of these devices are synchronized so that then when the teacher chooses a place, the entire classroom jumps there together. And if you want to capture something that's truly immersive, there are really only a handful of very custom camera rigs in the world that'll do the job. So today, we'd like to preview something that we call Jump. It has three parts. A camera rig, with very specialized geometry. An assembler, which turns raw footage into VR video. And a player. I'm excited to announce that GoPro plans to build and sell a Jump-ready 360-degree camera array. The assembler takes 16 different video feeds and uses a combination of computational photography, computer vision, and a whole lot of computers to recreate the scene as viewed from thousands of in-between viewpoints everywhere along the circumference of the camera array. Starting this summer, YouTube will support Jump. So if you want to experience VR video, all you need is the YouTube app, your smartphone, and some cardboard. I often get asked how to search Android photos and things like this, how do they relate to each other? For us, it is about, as Google, putting technology and computer science to work on important problems that users face and do it at scale for everyone in the world. This is why I.O. is so exciting for us. We get to share what we have been up to in the last year, and all you developers get to go out and build amazing things on top of what we do. 
So I can't wait to see what you build next year. Thank you so much for joining us. Good luck and see you next year.